Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about grading for uh, composition and rhetoric classes like English 15. And we're going to go over the grading standards that Penn State's program in writing and rhetoric has set up, um, which are the standards that we all use to assess student writing in our classes. So I want to first off talk about grading writing. Because there's a, a very common conception, there's a, a common often complaint that students make about the grading of writing, which is that it's subjective. Now, what I think students often mean by that is that unlike, say, exams in uh, science classes or uh, social sciences classes, history classes, things like that, what we're measuring is how effectively you utilized a skill set, as opposed to whether or not you've gotten an objectively correct answer. So in that case, this is actually true. There is an element of subjectivity to grading writing. That being said, what you want to be very aware of is that there's a huge difference between being, something being subjective and something being arbitrary these are not all the same thing. So when your writing instructor grades your writing, they're bringing to that grading a lot of experience as writers themselves, as teachers of writing who have been trained to teach writing, trained to grade writing, trained to, to understand what effectively works rhetorically and what doesn't work rhetorically. And you need to understand that rhetoric is in fact an extremely well theorized discipline going back to the 4th century BCE. So this is something that human beings have been thinking about, debating, uh, and figuring out what works and what doesn't work for two and a half thousand years. So again, this is a very di it's a very different thing to say this is subjective it depends to a certain extent on the instructor's judgment of how successful you were that's very different than saying this is an arbitrary process there's a tremendous amount of background and knowledge that goes into the grade that you get on any given paper so uh, just to take me for example um, I'm, now, I'm going into my fourth year teaching at Penn State. I've taught at West Virginia University. I taught at the University of Vermont. Each of those schools trained me to teach writing and trained me to grade writing. So in each case, that means I've gone through three formal university trainings, um, week-long trainings or two week-long trainings before my first semester teaching at each of those schools, and then a semester or a year-long course on uh, instruction to teach composition and rhetoric. In addition to that, I've done this for, I'm going into my 10th year teaching at university. That means I have read thousands, thousands of undergraduate papers. I've read thousands of composition papers of all different types. And so again, this is a tremendous amount of experience and a tremendous amount of background. And the other thing that you want to be aware of, and the second half of this video is going to focus a lot more on this, is that in a program like Penn State's, we have very specific guidelines for how we grade assignments. And those are available in Penn Statements, which you're required to buy for every section of English 15. Um, in this edition, uh, that's on page 8, page 8 to 9, which you can see but not read right here. Um, the other place that these grading standards are available is actually on the Penn State website, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. And if you're in my English 15 courses, you've got links to that up on our Canvas page as well. 
So those are standards that every English instructor in the English in, in composition here at Penn State are required to use when we're assessing your writing. So in addition to being printed in Penn Statements, the grading standards are also listed here on the Program in Writing and Rhetoric's website at this address. Um, you also have a link to it if you go to our Canvas page and scroll down. You actually have to scroll down to week three, but you've got PWR grading standards linked right there. Um, it's also in a couple other places. But um, we're going to talk in the, the second half of this video about the grading standards themselves, because these are the standards that every English 15 instructor is required to use. So every English 15 instructor uses these standards when grading students' papers, which means no matter which section you are enrolled in, no matter which section your friends are enrolled in, everybody has to meet these standards. We're all using them. There, finally got highlighted what I wanted to highlight. So we're going to go through uh, the standards for an A paper, a B paper, and a C paper, and we're going to talk through what these different categories mean, essentially. Um, and then we'll briefly discuss the D and the F paper, because hopefully we won't be getting too many of those this semester. So, under the A paper, it says, the A paper has not only fulfilled the assignment, but has done so in a fresh and mature manner. It has effectively met the needs of the rhetorical situation. It makes a substantial contribution to the situation. It is fully accommodated to its audience's needs and is likely to move them to act as the writer desires. The evidence is detailed. The sources of information or persuasion have been used creatively and cited appropriately. The evidence presented is appropriate to the audience. The reasoning is valid. Beyond that, the paper is thoughtful, showing hard work, good judgment, and sensitivity to the complexities of the situation or issue. The organization is effective for this audience and purpose. The introduction establishes the context and purpose of the communication. Segments, whether sections or paragraphs, are fully developed and follow logically from what precedes them. Headings and subheadings are appropriately used. The conclusion is suitable in tone and strategy. The prose is not only clear and reasonable and readable, sorry, but occasionally apt and memorable. It contains few errors, none of which seriously undermines the effectiveness of the paper for educated readers. So, what all of this boils down to is that the A paper is above and beyond expectations. So, the A paper is going to be in some way unique, creative, and exceptional. It's going to be exciting, it's going to uh, challenge all the reader's expectations for what this type of project should do. So the B paper, what it says here is that the assignment has not just been followed but fulfilled. In taking its stand, the paper shows a clear sense of audience and purpose. It shows more awareness of the implications of what it is saying and of its assumptions about the audience than the C paper does. The writer is not settled for the most obvious evidence. The B paper is characterized by thoroughness. The reasoning is more than adequate. Not only does it, not, does it make no mistakes, but it shows thoughtfulness and some awareness of complexities and other points of view. The B paper has an effective introduction and conclusion. The order of information is logical, and the reader can follow it because of well-chosen transitions. Paragraph divisions are logical, and the paragraphs use enough specific detail to make their point tellingly. The expression is competent, more ambitious than that of the C paper, less felicitous than that of the A paper. Not only is sentence structure correct, but it also uses subordination, emphasis, sentence length, and variety, and modifiers effectively. It would be surprising to find serious sentence errors, comma splices, fragments, or fused sentences in a B paper. Word choices idiomatic, vocabulary precise. Punctuation, grammar, and spelling conform to the conventions of edited American English. So, 
in a nutshell, the bee paper is strong. It's not necessarily as exciting and original and creative and thorough as the A paper, but it, it's exceeded the minimum requirements for the assignment. It has done something good. It's insightful, it's strong, it's well written. Now the C paper. This says here, the assignment has been followed. The paper develops its points with a sense of audience. The information or degree of persuasion in a, paper, in a C paper is appropriate. That means that there is evidence, and though the evidence is perhaps obvious and easily accessible, it has been gathered honestly and used responsibly. The C paper may exhibit some minor imperfections or inconsistencies in mapping out the arguments, but it commits no major flaws in reasoning. The organization is clear. The reader can easily outline the presentation. Paragraphs have adequate development and are divided appropriately. Transitions may be mechanical, but they foster coherence. The expression is competent. Sentence structure is generally correct, although it may show limited competence with such elements as subordination, emphasis, sentence variety, and length, and modifiers. It relies instead on simple and compound sentences. The paper is generally free of comma splices, unintentional fragments, and fused sentences. Word choice is correct, though limited. It may contain errors in spelling, mechanics, and grammar that reveal unfamiliarity with the conventions of edited American English. So, the C paper, I think, is best encapsulated by a word that shows up several times in this description, which is competent. The C paper essentially does what the assignment requires, but it doesn't go above and beyond. It's not necessarily memorable, it's not necessarily exciting, it's not necessarily insightful, but it achieves everything that the assignment requires without rising to the level of strength that we get in the B paper. Now the D paper is essentially You've given it the old college try, but it just hasn't worked out for one reason or another. Um, so a D signals that the paper makes a good uh, makes a good faith attempt, but is unsuccessful at meeting the basic requirements of the assignment. And the F paper, for the most part. It's very difficult to earn an F on a paper where you've made a good faith effort to do what the assignment requires. Essentially, in practice, an F means that you have not even attempted to succeed at the project. Um, so again, hopefully we won't be getting many D or F papers over the course of this semester. But again, the key things to remember here, the A paper is exceptional. It is in some way unique and strong and it far surpasses the minimum requirements for the assignment. The B paper is strong, it's solid, it does a good job surpassing the basic requirements of the assignment. The C paper meets the requirements of the assignment. So this is again a little bit different than what you might expect with a lot of your other classes. This is a situation where if you do just what the assignment requires, you will earn a C on that paper. So that's something that you want to be aware of, and you maybe need to adjust how you think about grading for this class, um, or maybe for a university more generally.